Ohio State Buckeyes and Lee Velicity, director of 10TV. Brought to you in part by Arby's, where you can get a delicious change of taste at all Columbus and Heath locations. And by Graham Ford, home of the big one, 707 West Broad at I-71. And by Buckeye Federal Savings and Loan Association. At Buckeye Federal, we'll show you the way. And now, here's Woody and Lee. Well, the Ohio State Buckeyes romped over the Badgers of Wisconsin in Madison today, 49-14, to and the Buckeyes played nearly perfect football, just like the weather in Wisconsin. It was a beautiful football day, and that's exactly the way the Buckeyes reacted. The defense really uh, controlled this football game, and uh, they gave you some points today, Coach. As a matter of fact, we didn't play nearly perfect ball, Lee. <laughs> Not on offense. We played rather, but well, this is the worst offensive game we played since the opening game of the season. Defensively, I thought we'd improved because they gave us excellent field position. Well, they gave us one touchdown on a blocked punt, gave us another on an intercepted pass, and we'll get to see those here, too, and we have the men who did it. And uh, then they gave us three other interceptions in which they gave us excellent field position. So actually, uh, the offense didn't do very well today, but the defense did. And we put them under great pressure right there before the half, and they finally buckled a little bit and got scored on. But other than that, I thought they played real good ball. Coach has got a couple of changes of pace today. Uh, he's going to diagram some plays on the blackboard. And no, uh, we're, uh, we're not going to diagram plays. That sounds sort of... Uh, too technical? No, uh, well, somewhat, but sort of prosaic, too. But no, this triple option you see us run every week, uh, it's a very intricate thing, and I thought we might just go over it briefly so he can try to find the ball. But if you find <laughs> it, you'll be defensing us too well. But it's uh, something that belongs strictly to college football. The pros don't even try it. Uh, high schools, some of them try it, and a few of them run it fairly well. But it's, it's a college thing, this triple option, and you have about a twentieth of a second to make up your, time, make up your mind what to do. And we felt our young quarterback this year has come along very well on it, picked it up extremely well. Uh, of course, Rod Gerald did it, and uh, before that, Cornelius Green and fellows like that have done an excellent job on it, but it is not easy to pick up. It takes a couple of years to do it, but this young fella did some shortcuts on it and does a good job on it. Mm -hmm. This game started with some controversy. A uh, team physician in Madison uh, oh, decided... Oh, let's not give him credit. Uh, as well, a wh fact, whoever it was, they well, talked about the chop block. And well, they, uh, will you yeah. explain that to us? I might even go on a little bit of uh, that in the blackboard. We've been double-teaming the middle guard for years, so has everybody else. Uh, but uh, what they do when they get that middle guard up now, they've said, and they're absolutely wrong on it, that the center straightens up the middle guard. That isn't true. The middle guard straightens up the center, center. Yeah, got it and then makes himself very vulnerable for a side swipe. As a matter of fact, uh, when Bill Willis was playing that middle guard, he was so efficient of standing up that center that they were side swiping him 30 years ago, longer than that even, in pro ball and in college ball. So it's been going on a long time. We try to keep the block at the hip so we won't hurt anyone. But occasionally a kid will get lower, he'll have farther to reach than he anticipates, and you do get down there, and you can hurt a youngster, and we surely don't do it on purpose. And for a doctor to come out and name names on youngsters, he's very, very unprofessional and could be open to a civil suit, I would assume, but I don't think any of us will do that. I think he should be cited to his professional uh, a committee on it, though, because he's totally wrong. The thing I worried about, the thing we've tried to do in football this year is to avoid any violence or bitterness in the game. And this was the thing that we all worried about, that something like this. As a matter of fact, we were going to open the game with a play up the middle. And I went to my coach before the game, and I said, maybe we better not do that. Have you ever thought what could happen if we did run that play up the middle and this youngster got hurt on the first play in the game? It could have a terrible crowd effect. And we did go ahead and run it. And uh, fortunately, we made yardage on it. And fortunately, the youngster did not get hurt. But uh, things like that can grow out of hand and out of proportion so easily. But uh, we're not out to hurt anybody. Doggone it, we got a youngster hurt today that'll be out for two or three weeks. A great youngster, the most polite 
the kid on the squad, as I've told him a dozen times, Ray Elliott. And we lost him today on merely a shoulder tackle, was all it was. And he got a dislocated shoulder, had to be taken inside to reduce the dislocation, and he'll be out for probably three weeks. Whether he'll make the last game of the season will be very problematical. And he's a doggone good football player and a great youngster. We sure hate to get him hurt, and I'm sure they didn't want to hurt him either. As a matter of fact, we coaches are always getting together and and comparing notes to see how we can reduce injuries. So we're not out to hurt one another at all. Let's take a look at the offensive highlights of the Ohio State-Wisconsin game in Madison. Quite a crowd there. A lot of people turned out to see the Buckeyes play. I should say the defensive highlights. These are the Buckeye uh, defenders. That's a great play there. Doug down it right in the end zone. Number 15 got that one. And they were, they were down in there on that one. That was Alvin Washington, I should have said. Pretty good stop in there. Who was the first in there? That's Alvin Washington again. I think Washington. we got him for the show tonight. Byron and uh, Sullivan. Yeah. yeah, all three of them. Now, they tried to run the triple option inside. We did a pretty good job of stuffing it, didn't we? And that was uh, Cousineau uh, stops Green. Here's Gary Doolin and Tom Cousineau stopping that's the play. Okay, here's your block punt right here. We get it real clean. We felt all week we could get it. I know Coach Hill told me at dinner the other night. They knew they'd get it. We didn't do a good job of recovering. <laughs> Otho Watson, a freshman, finally got that ball right at the edge of the end zone. This is Callis Mickey. In the, the yes, this is where our young Sir Ray Ellis got hurt on that play there. And here's uh, Doolin stopping Green on a sweep over here, right there, number 60, Gary Doolin. And here's our big sophomore, Henson, decking Callis Mickey there. He made the number 54, he <laughs> held on, didn't let him get away. And that's our. Those are the defensive plays we have there. And as I say, our defense was more aggressive today and made more big plays than they've made in quite a while. All right, we'll be back with more right after we call this timeout. Well, Woody said the offense didn't play well, but they did get 49 points on the board, uh, although the defense contributed very heavily to that number. Let's take a look at the offensive highlights and see just how the, Buc the Bucks put those points on the board. First of all, there was a good crowd, almost 80,000 people on hand at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. 79,940. The first uh, kickoff goes down here, and he, boy, he gets hit. Ooh-wee. Calvin Murray. That's Calvin Murray, number 43. And here's Art Schlichter's 43-yard run. Now, that's the triple. He cuts well. Here's a fellow didn't throw because he'd have clipped if he had it right there. If he had it, he'd have clipped there. That's number 40. Doug Donnelly. Uh, that Good decision. Donnelly. Good yeah, thinking. It had to be. Here he goes in the end zone. On We've had that play for 20 years right there. Mm -hmm. All right. Now here's the, a punt block. We get two looks at it here. Jim Laughlin goes in and blocks it. Clean the whistle. We fell on it down here, but we just batted it. And now, now that's a freshman. That's a freshman, Otho Watson, really in his first game who got there. All right, now here's an interception by their number 12. Puts them in scoring position there. And here's their touchdown. Just I thought Paul Ross was going to catch him. Yeah, yeah, they let him break contain though. And this fellow Charles, a good receiver. Well gone a good one. Too good right there. Here right before the half, we turned the game around though. Here Tyrone Hicks goes in there. This is a funny thing. Right here after team scored is the time you go on this play. So he got hit right there and he broke it. Tom, that's Tom Wall trying to catch up, but Tom is not going to make it. <laughs> Incidentally, here's another one. Watch him look the ball right into his arm. Yep, yeah, he did that, because he's bobbled that a couple times. I'll remind him before he went in or nothing. 
Tom Law is pretty fast. We'll get him out for track this spring. <laughs> <laughs> and here's uh, and fellas, got Ricky catch. Johnson giving him a little escort and again deciding not to clip. Good decision. Here's Vince right, here's Killings. Vince Killings. This is the third quarter. Here he goes some 60 yards. All the way. He picked up a real good block, but you can't see it. With a humdinger. So he goes in. And right, here's Todd Bell recovering one of their fumbles. This good back that shifted from quarterback to tailback, number 11, and he fumbled right there. And we took over the winning and scored pretty quickly. Here's Casting Nola going in for his first score right there. That's the triple option again. Mm -hmm. And here it is again. See, there's the fullback. They thought he had the ball, but he didn't quite. All right, and here's a fumble recovered by Todd Bell again. He got two fumbles today, right there. And notice how he covers the ball. All right, and here's Cassie's other touchdown. That is not a triple option. Man. And there's their second touchdown. That was achieved late in the ball game against our second unit, however. Okay, Coach, how about explaining that triple option? Yeah, I've been promising to grow that triple option, and uh, we haven't used the blackboard on this show for years, and we won't make it too long or too boring. This is an extremely intricate play, and I don't mind telling about it here because we change it and run it differently almost every time we run it. But uh, basically, we'll block it something like this, and the fullback, as he starts to drive right over the guard there, the quarterback gives him the ball. And he rides him about so far, right about that far. And in the meantime, that quarterback is looking at that tackle. If the tackle comes down to take our fullback like that, the quarterback is going to take that ball out of there and come on out. If the tackle plays wide like this, then the quarterback is going to give that ball, and there goes the fullback right there. That's the number one man in the play. Now then, and he has, as I say, there about a twentieth of a second to make up his mind. No more than that, certainly. And uh, how do you make up your mind on that? How does the fullback know he's going to take it? He is never the quarterback. He must never make up his mind he has that ball until the quarterback finally leaves it in there, and then he goes with it. All right? Quarterback took it out now, and he comes out along the line to the end. This man's going out to block the corner, and the quarterback will come right out at that end, trying to work up field right at the end. And that end is going to have to do something now. If the end goes to jump him like that and to take him, then he's going to pitch to Ron Springs or any of her tailbacks that are in there. He's going to pitch it right out like that, and away goes Ron Springs. A lot of times that end can't do that. He'll decide to run out here and go after Ron Springs, in which case that quarterback will make a little fake, and he'll keep the ball. So there's the quarterback. He may run it as the, really the third choice. His second choice is normally this man. We like to get the ball out to here in the open spaces. And that's the triple option. That's one of them. And after these fellas get real smart in there, then we come back. And we run another one. And we try to run these as often as we can because now when that tackle decides he wants to stand there and give us some phony movements, which he'll do, right away he'll say, oh, they're optioning on me. So he'll fake inside and all that stuff. So instead, as Francis Smith used to say, that there's one way to finesse a tackle, and that's knock thunder out of him. <laughs> and so, so then this end goes in and blocks him. If he wants to stand there and look around, now we run the ball a little wider out here with the quarterback coming out here. Now he makes his ride here. And now who's he going to fool? The man right there, the end. If the end decides he wants to tackle a fullback, now then, the quarterback is not going to give it to the fullback. But if the end stands there momentarily, he's going to give it to the fullback. That's the first choice. That's, uh, he gives it to Paul Campbell. He's got about so long again to make up his mind. All right, if the end goes in after him, then the quarterback comes right on out around. Here's that guy who wants to knock his head off now, and he'll come shooting in there. When he does, out goes the ball to this fella. 
If he fakes the shoot there and comes outside, then there goes the quarterback. So again, there's the fullback one, the quarterback two, the tailback three. And you work for hours and hours and hours. And of course, when they're that intricate, you can have fumbles if you're not careful. Not a day on that play, we had no fumbles at all. We've gone about three weeks without a fumble on them. It is an extremely difficult play to defense. And it is a very intricate play, and I thought maybe you'd like to know how we run it. Now, confidentially, uh, if you tell the wrong people about that, I told you because I know you won't tell anybody, but if you tell the wrong people, <laughs> we'll run it a different way the next time. You, because we've got about five or six different ways, and our linemen get up there, and it sounds like a Chinese fire drill. They get to talking in there to change up and go another direction and block it differently, and it looks different, only, almost, different almost every time we run it. Okay. Coach, would you very quickly show us the, uh, the chop block? Would you very quickly just... Well, the chop block is a double team right here. All right. In, in one game last year, Aaron Brown was double teamed over 50 times. So to keep from getting him hurt, we play him back a little deeper. Or we'll move him into a gap here. Or we'll move him into the gap there and let him offset a little bit or loop him a little bit one way or the other. We do all of those things from having him sitting there, sort of a sitting duck. Well, all coaches can do that if they want to. But to let him sit up there all the time and have him straighten this man up, he's going to get punched quite a bit there. But you've got to move him around because you sure don't want to get him hurt. And we played Aaron Brown there for four years, and he never got hurt. He got banged up some, but he never got badly hurt, unfortunately. Okay, Coach, we'll be back to talk to the defense right after this timeout. We've got to move pretty fast tonight because we're about out of time, but uh, I want to go to Alvin Washington, a sophomore linebacker who got 15 tackles today, seven solos and eight assists, and that's... That's getting up there in, in Tom Cousineau's class, and on top of that, you got that great big interception down there in the goal line. Do you think working on that drill lately has been helping you catch that ball? Yes, sir. It yeah. helped me a lot. Well, it does help, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And that, that interception sure helped, because that stopped the drive that was right down in there. They were down in there to score. This next fellow's been hurt for about a month, and he's getting back in the swing of things today, and it sure sounds that way. He got two fumble recoveries, and you, you covered that ball. You were listening to me the, the way I tell you to cover, don't you? Yes, you sir. fall over the ball. You don't fall on it. Why don't you fall on it? Because it was squared out like that one in the end zone. Squared yeah, out like the it. one in the end zone. That <laughs> fellow wasn't listening, was he? We won't mention his name. Uh, what, what was his number? 25. 25. Uh -huh. <laughs> it squared it out. But the next two, you learned on that one, didn't you? Yes. You find the old man does know a little something, didn't he? That was in my book 10 years ago. You know, it looked like, and, and particularly on turf, that ball bounces like that. You know, it looked like a bunch of trained seals out there bouncing that ball around if you don't fall over it. Okay, but what did you get there today? Now you got um, six tackles and two fumble recoveries. That that's getting back in the ball. Game, isn't it? <laughs> you don't mind if I mention these people that you're the fellow who broke Jesse Owens' 44-year broad jump record, do you? No, sir. That doesn't embarrass you anymore, does it? You sued, didn't it? In a way. Yeah, in a way, but not anymore. No, sir. Okay, all right. This next fellow, Jim Laughlin, got that block punt today, and you got seven tackles, seven solos, and one assist for a total of eight, but the big one was the block punt. Why, um, uh, when did you know you were going to get that block punt? Well, I just came up the middle, and I think Todd was right inside of me, and the fullback picked him up, and I was just wide open to get it. Uh, when did you go to work on that? Well, we've been doing it all week the You've same way. You've been working on it since Monday, haven't you? Yes, sir. Since yeah, the beginning Coach of the year. Hill told me Monday night, he, after going over the pictures, he said, we can get one on them. He said, we can yeah. get one on them, and we sure did. But you know, there are a lot of fellas could rush all day at a block or a punt, and they won't get it. It takes a guy who has the fortitude to go in there and thrust his body right in front of that ball, or right in front of that foot, actually. Sir. Okay, that's a good one, Jim. This next fellow, I can't get his name. Did you ever hear him? What, what, what's this fellow's name over here? Vince, Vince what? Vince Gillings. 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 Vince, where's he from? There's Somebody said he was here a week ago. <laughs> uh, what did he do today that he got up here? 
Did he win? Got him a touchdown. He got him a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he went 60 yards on that one. I think maybe we're going to put him a tailback next week. No, that's if he goes right. 60 that's yards, all right. that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you like it better where you are, you do. Yes, but he got two interceptions, and he returned one for 61 yards, and he got four solo tackles, one assist for a total of five. You're playing real good ball now. When are you going to grow up? <laughs> I don't know. How much you weigh now, Vince? 170. Oh, come on now. Are you that big? <laughs> All right. He may not be big enough, well, but he's brave enough. He's playing real, real good ball. And dandy to have you fellas on the show. Our defense is picking up now. We've got a lot of work to do and a lot of better to get yet, though, haven't we? Huh? All right. Can we do that? Yes, sir. Let's see, none of you fellas are seniors, are you? No. You're going to be back. Sophomore, sophomore, junior, sophomore. That's dandy. Thanks a lot, men. And today, let's see, you had about 17 carries and 74 yards. That isn't great, but that's pretty good. And you're hammering that defense pretty well up the middle. You did have a fumble in there today. Let's talk about that, because we got to get rid of those darn things. Mm -hmm. What happened on it? I just got careless, and I picked the ball too low. Mm -hmm. You got you knocked careless, it out. Didn't you? Mm -hmm. That's why we have to keep yelling at you. You don't dare... You don't dare be nice to you on those things, because it's when you take that ball for granted that you're going to fumble it. True. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the first fumble you've had since when? Have you had one this year? That was my second. Your second? Yes, that's well, okay. too many. Well, yeah, that's too many. That's right. Because he's been having, uh, Paul's been having a real good season, a real good season. And, and that stopped the drive for us, didn't it? Yes, it yeah. did. Yeah. We got that first touchdown too easy, don't you think? Huh? What I do don't you know. think about that, Keith? What do you think about that first touchdown? Did it come to you? We got, what was it, 80 yards in seven plays, something like that? Yes, it, it wasn't that difficult, but I think uh, we started our drive out very fast, and that's what we wanted to do. We wanted that's to start right. out fast. That's right. And if we could just gotten a couple in there, Paul, because we, we'd start that second one off of the, off the two-foot line. If we could have marched 99 yards in one foot, that would have been dandy. And we're going. We're going. I know. Sure. What are you learning about that offensive tackle play? What's the hardest thing to learn about offensive tackle play? The hardest thing to learn, I think, is um, pass protection. It's yeah. very difficult because your man can beat you anyway. It's very difficult. You have to study your man and know how fast he is and how strong he is in order to beat him. Are some of them a lot better than others? Oh, of course. In any other position, it's the same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you study him during the week. Yes, I tried. When do you get the first look at this man this week? Uh, most of the time it's on Tuesday. On Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the uh, one this week gave you some trouble, didn't he? At times he did, yes. Yeah. He played a little different than I expected. But you think that's the toughest thing you have? I think it is, no, pass protection. This man's been playing super football for us, uh, always above 70%. For a tackle, that's all going good. This next man, we put him in right for the half, and he had bobbled a couple before this, and I'd been on him about it. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. And boy, he made sure he had that ball, and a couple of guys got a shot at you, didn't they? Yes, sir. You did. picked up your feet, and incidentally, Tyrone Hicks is the Big Ten sprint champion. Nobody's going to catch him once he got out there. They gave you a real good hold, didn't they? Yes, yeah. they did. When did you know you are going all the way? Uh, when I became one-on-one, -on -one, when I got past about the 30, 40 Is hours. that right? You knew you were going all the way there. Yes, I did. Well, we'll have to give you a chance to do that again. Thank you, Ken. Congratulations. Keith, somebody once said you can't advance to victory, right? Somebody once said you can't advance to victory. No, you can't. No, can't, no, you can't, can't retreat, retreat to you victory. Can't retreat That's to victory. why it's tough to pass block. We'll be back. <laughs> and we'll be back next week right here with the Woody Hayes Show at 11.30. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, nice game. Thank you. The Woody Hayes Show with Woody Hayes, coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes, and Lee Velicity, sports director of 10TV. Brought to you in part by Graham Ford, home of the big one, 707 West Broad at I-71. And by Buckeye Federal Savings and Loan Association. Come to Buckeye Federal. We'll show you the way.
And by Arby's, where you can get a delicious change of taste at all Columbus and Heath locations. Tickets for the Woody Hayes Show are available on a first-come, first-serve basis at Arby's Grove City location, 2453 Stringtown Road, and at Graham Ford, 707 West Broad Street at I-70.